Father, thank you. Lord, I know nothing. I'm not even relying on any preparation I've made. I just rely on your grace. I ask you have mercy. Speak into my heart. Speak through me. Speak to your people. Lord, you know everyone on this live broadcast. You know everyone that will be watching. You know everyone that probably will stumble on this sometime after this broadcast. Lord, your word is always fresh. Your word is always the truth. Let your truth through my lips set everybody free in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, all through this week, remind every one of us, introduce Jesus to those who don't know Jesus, but remind every one of us the things we hear today to do the things we hear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right. So I'll start with a scripture, how to receive God's good and perfect gift of grace. Thank you. I can see some new people online. Thank you, Caleb. So good to know you could join this service. Thank you. And uh, everyone joining right on this live broadcast, it's so good to know that you can make it. Good morning. And uh, everywhere you are, whatever time of the day, it is good because I'm bringing you glad tidings. So I'll start with a scripture. Now, this scripture can be found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Do you know what it says? I read from a very simple version of the Bible. It's the English Standard Version. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Let me read that again. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. You see, we have to understand clearly from that scripture that this gift called grace, this good and perfect gift of grace is from God. That's one. It's not because you earned it. It's not because you deserve it. It's because God, who is the creator of everything, God, who is the source of all life and intelligence, just chooses to give this grace, this gift. So it's not a gift that you work hard for. You know, like uh, our parents, you know, they bring us up. You know, if you work hard, you will be rewarded. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Not in this circumstance. This is not the situation. God freely gives this good gift, this perfect gift called grace. And I will take us to John, sorry, Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Let's recall from last week, from the couple, remember their names, Zechariah and Elizabeth. Now see how an angel just chooses to appear from God and tells Zechariah that, see, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You shall call his name John. Now, this was Zechariah and Elizabeth who had been serving as priests in, uh, you know, in, the, in those days, in the Bible days. They would go to the temple and they were serving as priests. He was a high priest that particular year, that particular season, which meant that he was the one who will go on behalf of everyone then to offer sacrifices, to offer gifts to God, sin offerings, burnt offerings on behalf of the people so that God will forgive, God will cleanse, and the people will start a new beginning, a fresh start with God. And, you know, at this time, according to the Bible, Elizabeth was barren, so there was no way she could have children anymore. So medically, it was impossible. Physically, it was impossible because even Zechariah now was very old, and the womb of Sarah, of uh, Elizabeth, was 
dead. Steve had barren, could not produce, had no capacity to produce. But God now decides, I'm going to give you a free gift, a child. You know what? You will call his name John. Do you know what John means from last week, those who were here? You got it? God is gracious. Jehovah is a gracious giver. In other words, I'm giving you this gift of grace, not because you earned it, not because you work for it, because right now there's no way they could have a child. So I'm giving you John. I'm giving you grace. I'm showing my grace to you. I'm showing something you didn't even deserve, but I'm, I freely decide to just give you this gift. And remember, call his name. God is gracious to me. Jehovah is a gracious giver. So we saw that from last week. And uh, let's go to another scripture. Let's go to this other scripture so that we will see the link now. What is this grace? What is the fullness of this grace? How do we get this grace? These are the things we're going to be looking at today. Remember the topic? How to receive God's good and perfect gift of grace. So where is this grace found? Right? John chapter 1, and I read verse 12 to verse 14. Let's go to verse 12. It says, but all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. All who did receive him, okay? All who believed, look at it again, receive, and then they believed. Because we're talking about how to receive God's good path and perfect gift today. So they received, they believed, he gave them the right to become children of God. Verse 13 now says, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but nor of the will of man, but of God. Which shows clearly, this is purely God's prerogative. This is not what a man wills. This is not what a man can do. This is not what flesh and blood, human beings can create, manufacture, go into the tests, uh, go into the uh, laboratory and kind of conjure and, you know, manufacture. No, it is of God. So what is this thing of God? What is what we receive? What is what we believe? Listen, verse 14 now tells us the word became flesh, dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of the only son from the father. Look at it now. Don't miss this. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Don't miss that. So what did we receive? What do people receive and believe? In that verse 12, the word of God. What is inside that word of God? You got it now. The word is full of grace and truth. Now, let's go down to verse 16 of that John's gospel. John's gospel, verse 16. Let me tell you what's in that verse 16. It says, for from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Just look at that. From his fullness, remember it's full of grace and truth. From that fullness, we have all received. So when we receive him, do you know what we receive? We receive from that fullness, grace upon grace, which means the grace keeps flowing. The grace is always available. From grace unto grace, grace upon grace. Now, verse 13 I explains, because under the old covenant, the law was given by Moses. So if you look at John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, for the law, verse 17 says, for the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So those are scriptures we just want to establish. So let's go. Today, we will stop at number five. I want to share with us seven things on how to receive God's gift of grace. So, number one, how to receive God's perfect gift, God's good and perfect gift from God. I mean, God's good and perfect gift of grace. How do we? Number one, please know this family, the good and perfect gift from God above 
It is from God above. Let that establish in your mind, and it is good and perfect. It is good, it's a perfect gift, it's from God above, and the quality, it is good and perfect. Now, what do we mean by good and perfect? Now, if you look at James chapter 1, verse 17, he says every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, the English Standard Version puts it this way. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. This good gift, this perfect gift, doesn't change. Now, what do we mean by good? What do we mean by perfect? Now, good means it's pleasant, it's agreeable, it's joyful, it's happy, <laughs> it's excellent, distinguished, upright, honorable. It stands out. It's just good. You know, you can dispute it. It is good. So, and also perfect. It's not just good. What is perfect? Finished. It's complete. It's, you know, that word perfect there says wanting nothing necessary to completeness. It's just complete. It's mature. Mature. So this good and perfect gift from is from God above and it is good and perfect. So just let's establish this first. If you know this in your heart, then you are ready for number two. Number two, God's good and perfect gift of grace is available for everyone. That is number two. God's good and perfect gift of grace is available for everyone. Everyone. Remember it's from God above, but it's available to special people? No, not a chance. Listen, in verse 11 on that slide you see, it says, for the remarkable, undeserved, that's Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, for the remarkable, undeserved grace of God that brings salvation as appeared to all men. It's a remarkable, it's undeserved, it's the grace, free gift. It's available. It brings salvation with it. Once you have it, you have salvation. He says it has appeared to, look at that, all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly immoral desires to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with a purpose that reflect spiritual maturity in this present age. Look at that. You need, and I need, something that, listen, will bring me salvation will teach me to reject ungodliness, will teach me to reject worldly, immoral desires, to live a sensible, I don't know anyone who doesn't want to live a sensible life, to live an upright life, to live a godly life, a life of purpose, in this present age that we live in, with all the madness, with all the craziness, and all the deaths and pandemic all over the place, you and I need the grace of God. So you see, it's available to everyone. Now, let's go to number three. Number three, how to receive God's good and perfect gift of grace. Listen, you can receive God's good and perfect gift of grace through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Remember number one? No! No! that it's from God above, is good and perfect. Two, available to everybody. Number three, you and I can receive it. But there's a channel through which we can receive it. It's through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1, verse 12, we read it before, but he says, but all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Let me explain what it means to receive. Listen. I can stand before you, stretch out my hands, have a gift for you, and stay literally stand before you for 
minutes and minutes can go into hours stretching it out to you and say, please, I want to give you this gift. Not because you deserve it, not because you asked for it, but because I chose to show you my goodness. I chose to show you my mercy and I'm stretching it out to you. I can stand there for hours. If you do not receive, stretch out your hand, make a connection with me, literally take an action. That gift will be available. That perfect gift will be available but you ain't going to enjoy it. So you have to receive and you will believe. Listen to that order. You see, at times we try to believe what we have not received. Let me repeat that because it's just a little, little shift. We are trying to believe a Jesus we have not received. Do you know why people don't believe there is the existence of God? Because you have not received God. You cannot believe what you have not received. If I'm telling you, I have a gift for you, and this gift will do you good, this gift will perfect everything about your life, and I'm stretching it out, you know, you can still doubt me, but when you receive what I've given you, and you taste it, you test it, my goodness, then you'll know that it's a good and a perfect gift and then your belief system is strong. Don't try to believe what you have not first received. <laughs> I'm not playing with words, okay? Don't try to believe what you have not received. The Bible said as many as received him, then he gave them the power. He did not give power to those who didn't receive. There was a time in the Bible, the Bible tells us, Jesus was going about his village where he was raised up and he was going about and trying to heal everybody. He had the power, the spirit of God was upon him. He went round the villages. I think the story is somewhere in Mark chapter six. The Bible said he could not do any miracles. Here was Jesus who had been healing the blind, who had been raising the dead. This is Jesus who had been opening deaf ears. This is Jesus, the same Jesus, who cleansed lepers in some villages ago, away. He went to his own, and the Bible said he could not do any miracle. Do you know why? They did not receive him. They didn't receive him. So they couldn't believe him. Now, what did they receive about him? <laughs> they received about him. Is this not the son of a carpenter? Don't we know his sisters? Don't we know Salome? Don't we know James, his brother? Don't we know Salome, his sister? Don't we know his father, Joseph the carpenter? And besides, if you study the Bible, according to history, there was even a controversy about his birth because everybody knew that Joseph and Mary, oh, something fishy happened. How can Mary just suddenly show up with a big tummy? And we know. So there was a controversy. So, you know, they did not receive him. All they could receive about him was, this is a carpenter. If you receive Jesus as a carpenter, if you receive, receive Jesus as a folk tale, if you receive Jesus as some fictional story told to just try and make the world better, then you won't believe in Jesus. But if you receive Jesus as savior, if you receive Jesus as your Lord, master, maker, owner, the word of God, the ever-living word of God, the two-edged sword, the word of God that can divide, that can heal, the word that does not return to the heavenly father without accomplish, accomplishing what, if, what, what, what God has sent it to do. If you can receive, you will believe. Listen, you can't believe what you have not received. It is that simple. So try to comprehend today what have you received about God? You've been hearing about God all this while. You've been hearing about Jesus all this while, but you have not received him as Savior. You have not received him as Lord. You have not received him as the Word of God. That's why some religious people, religion, some other religions, they will never accept Jesus. Do you know why? They've not received him as Lord and Savior. Some say, oh, no, 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 it's just one of the prophets. If you receive him as one of the prophets, you will experience the salvation he brings, the grace of God 
that brings salvation that has appeared to all men. So we need to emphasize that you can receive God's gift and perfect gift, but it is through Jesus. On that slide, the Bible now says in verse 16 of John chapter 1, for from him, we saw it before, his, from, 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 from his fullness, look at it again, we have all received grace upon grace. Remember, you've got to receive to believe. So what do you receive? That is what we need to look at. That is usually the paradigm shift between a believer and someone who doesn't believe. They have not received Jesus. As many, John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as received him. He didn't say as many as believed him. Note that, as many as received him. All who did receive and then believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We need to emphasize that because when you receive him, then you begin to enjoy from his fullness. Remember, it's full of grace and truth. We receive from his fullness, grace upon grace. Verse 16, John chapter 1, verse 16. For from his fullness, we have all, we'll look at that word again, received. This is not a play of words. This is actually the order. Received grace upon grace. All right, let's move on. Number three. That's number three. Number four. How do I receive God's good and perfect gift of grace? Number four, listen. Ho, ho. Please don't miss this. I want someone to just stay still right now. Okay? Let me just tell you, you have to sit down now. Right? It's, lit, it's as if I can see some people moving around. You know, you're, form, you're forming a bad habit now. When the service is on, you just move around, you iron your clothes, you start cooking, and you're listening. You've got to sit down right now. Do you know why? Because I always look at what Jesus did when he was about to perform a miracle, a multiplication of the five loaves and two fishes. The first instruction he gave was, let the men sit down. He commanded everybody to sit down. So, listen, you've got to sit down now. Behave. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a big brother. I'm not trying to command you. I'm just giving you something that will change your life right now. You've got to sit down right now so that you can receive. He said, tell everybody to sit down. And then he, he gave thanks. He multiplied. He prayed over the, the fish and the bread the multiplication. And the Bible said, he told his disciples, he gave them, and the disciples went and gave them to those who were sitting down. It's very key. These are some things we miss. Those who are sitting down were those who partook of that miracle. When you are going all over the place, you are not ready to receive. Let me give you another scripture. If you think I'm rebuking you, I'm trying to behave like a, a big daddy. No. Mary and Martha, Jesus comes to their house. What happened? Martha was moving all over the place, going in and out, trying to prepare, trying to serve. But Mary sat down at Jesus' feet and began to receive what Jesus was saying. Martha, who was moving about, could not receive anything Jesus was saying because she was moving about. Okay, thank you for accepting this rebuke. All right, and correction, it's out of love. Just sit down and listen to number four. Number four, here it goes. Do not, because you will now see why number four is important. Do not walk or work for God. But walk before God and walk with God. I am emphasizing this, seriously emphasizing this, okay? Let me repeat number four, how to receive God's good and perfect gift of grace. Do not walk or work for God, but walk before God and walk with God. What's the difference? You see, this is where the problem usually is. You see people, oh, I've been walking 
for God. I've been working for God, but I can't see the fruit of it in my life. If you have that kind of mentality, then you are making it sound like you're doing God a favor. You're making it sound like, if not for you, there can't be God. You're making it sound like, listen, this is a hard one. <laughs> you're making it sound like God cannot do without you. Do you know God can do without you? Do you know some people you've existed all these years, God is there, God is real, God is blessing people. You are not there. God can do without you. But you and I, we cannot do without God. We can do without God for a season, but there comes a time in your life when you reach your wit's end, you will now search for God. I am telling you, you know, somebody said once, it sounded harsh, but it's still reality. He said, don't worry. If you don't believe in God right now, if you don't receive God right now while you're alive, when you get to hell, you will believe him. Listen, you see, the devil, Satan, the opposer, the deceiver, deceiving people, planting thoughts in people, making people to doubt the word of God, doubt even the existence of God. And you know, the devil is so smart. The devil even does not even make some people doubt God's existence. Do you know what he makes? He makes them doubt what God has said. He makes them doubt the integrity of the word of God. So it will tell you, just like it told Eve in Genesis chapter 3, did God say, truly, did God really say this? He will misinterpret the word of God, misrepresent God. And then doubt hits. Once doubt hits, faith goes. One faith goes. The Bible says without faith, we cannot, cannot receive anything from God. Listen, this word is about to set you free. Stop walking for God. Stop working for God. Start walking before God and with God. Let me explain. Now, Zechariah and Elizabeth, if you read Luke chapter 1 verse 6, do you know what the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 6? The Bible says the two of them, the Let's go there. If we can, if we can bring the scripture on, that would be great. Luke chapter 1. And if you look at verse 6, it described the two of them, right? We're looking at scriptures today because I do not want to say anything that the Bible does not say. So Luke chapter 1 and verse number 6. Let me be sure that it's verse number 6. Yeah, look at this now. The Bible says, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were both righteous, approved in the sight of God. They were walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Remember, you're not walking for God, you are walking with God. They were walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Okay, let me help you again. Let's go to a man called Abraham, and you will see something about Abraham. In Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1, do not walk or work for God, but walk before God and walk with God. There is a difference, walking or working for and working before and with. I will explain. Now, God comes to a man called Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. Do you know what God said? The Bible said Abraham was 90 years old and 99, 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him. God said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me. He didn't say, Abraham, I'm recruiting you into my army. Walk for me. No, walk before me. What is number four? Do not walk or work for God, but walk before God and walk with God. So when you look at Abraham and you look at what God told him, he said, Abraham, walk before me. What does that mean? Let me explain what that means to us. And please don't miss this. Walking before God is like God is standing, you are before him, 
and you are open. Everything you're doing is before him, in his presence. So you are not doing it behind him. You are not doing on his behalf when he's not there, as if you're doing him a favor, as if if you are not there, God ain't there. Listen, so you are walking before. You are living a life open, an open life with God. You are not doing anything that God will not see you do. We are going somewhere with this. Now, do you know what God now told him? He said, and be perfect. We need to understand what that word perfect means. You know, what that word perfect literally means is that God was telling him, Abraham, I want you to walk sincerely with integrity. Whole, entirely, live your life like I'm there with you. You know, you and I, there are some things we will never do when some people are there. Before people, we will never do it. You know, I don't know if my dad is watching, <laughs> but hope things have passed away. You know, I we, we, we were brought up and uh, God bless my, my late mom and dad. They taught us good morals. They taught us not to, you know, do all the vices, take what doesn't belong to you, uh, you know, uh, covet other people's property. Uh, you know, they taught us not to drink and all that. But, you know, the vices that I, I won't tell you the vices because all things are passed away. I don't want to encourage anybody now because someone will say, oh yeah, pastor said this, so let me do it now. Don't do nothing. Listen, you better work before your parents, all right? But behind my parents, I will do those vices. Before them, I will never, ever do it in their presence. Now, let me tell you a story. This is just coming to me. A friend of mine, and I don't know if he's watching. <laughs> he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and at times watches the services. Now, he said he grew up and his mom never, ever knew he was drinking and taking alcohol so badly. He would drink, get drunk, and you know, the vices, boys, I testosterone. I hope I got it, Dr. Uche, and all the uh, adrenaline pumping you just want to like they say, sow your wild oats all over the place. Listen, they have adverse effects. Now, he used to drink and everything. So one day, he goes to a party. The mom was there, and then he was offered alcohol, strong drink. We were all teenagers. Do you know what the mom said? The mom said, my son, you're offering him this strong drink? No, my son does not take alcohol. I trust my son. He will never drink alcohol. Not before me. <laughs> never. He said that statement touched him. That was the last time he drank behind his mom. So he always, always, anytime he wants to do anything, he will remember his word, the words of his mom. And imagine his mom was there. So he wouldn't do anything that he, behind his mom that he cannot do before his mom. So God is saying, walk before me. Abraham, walk sincerely with an open heart integrity, openness. If you make a mistake, make it before me. If you fall, fall before me. If you want to sin, sin before me. I remember another story, a colleague of mine at work. She said, one day, her mom, or was it her dad? I don't, I don't, a parent said, look, let me tell you, I don't want you to do all this nonsense. I don't want you to live this kind of life. But listen, if you want to smoke cigarettes, and if you want to take alcohol, here it is, I'll go buy it. Here it is, do it in my presence. You do it before me. Do it, smoke, all right? Smoke all the weed you want, Sm drink all you want before me. She said she was shivering, that those words never left her. Not one day did she ever touch alcohol or smoke weed again. Walk before me. What a paradigm shift. You've been trying to walk for God, no, or work for God, no, walk before him. Do everything sincerely out of a heart of integrity before him, like God is there. That's, the, that's just what it's saying. Be perfect, be sincere, all right? So if we go back to that slide, and when you look at Noah, okay? Noah, God calls Noah. The Bible said Noah walked with God. If you look at Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8 to 9, this is amazing, I tell you, because we're going to round up now. Genesis chapter 6, if you look at verse 8 and 9, 
Genesis chapter 6. Uh, let me just try and quickly bring it on. And if it's on the screen, also that would be great. Genesis chapter 6, from verse 8 and 9. Look at this. But Noah found favor, because that's another word for grace, in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9. Now look at this. Look at this. We're talking about how to receive God's good and perfect. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Blameless in his generation. Look at it. Noah walked with God. He didn't walk for God. He walked with. When you are with somebody, you are before them. You do everything before them. Listen, somebody is struggling with a bad habit. Someone is struggling with sin. Listen, from today, you want to sin? Say, God, I'm before you right now. I'm going to do this sin. I know it's wrong, but I'll do it in front of you. You will see the shift. You will see the fear of God that will come upon you. There are some things you and I will never do before people. So the consciousness that people are there will not make you do it, no matter the craving. And that is the same way. If our minds, our hearts today can shift, that we stop working for God, we stop working for God, but we walk before God and walk with God. If you look at Solomon, we may not go to that scripture, but if the slide comes on, you can write the scripture down. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. Do you know what God told uh, 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 that, that king, uh, King uh, Solomon? You see, the Bible says, he said, look, as for you, you just walk before me. As David, your father, walked in the integrity of heart, in uprightness, in accordance with everything that I commanded you, keeping my statutes. Look at it. Solomon, walk before me. Oh, this will set you free today, I tell you. So that is it. Number four, don't forget how to receive God's gifts of grace. Because now I walk with God, what happened? He found grace. Abraham walk. God told him, walk with me, and I will empower you. I will bless you. That's just what was happening there. Solomon, walk before me. Walk with me. I will establish your throne. This is amazing, I tell you. Just look at that difference. Stop walking for God. Stop working for God. Start walking before and walk with God. Finally, number five, how to receive God's good and perfect gift. And I round up with this. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Do not doubt God. Whenever or if you do doubt God, this is a long one, always be sincere with your doubts so that God can help you shut out every doubt. Let me repeat that. You know, we said from now, you walk before God, you walk with God, don't walk for him, don't walk uh, or work for him. Now that you've started your walk with God, don't doubt him at all. But, excuse me, we are human. We are human. And I tell you, once in a while, fear comes and I have doubts. Hey, did God say, hey, God, will this happen? Hey, God, I'm pregnant now. Hey, God, will I lose this pregnancy? Hey, God, hey, 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 uh, I'm going for this now. I've just got this. I will lose this. If you ever start doubting God's promises, you have to be sincere with your doubts so that God can help you shut out every doubt. Zechariah, do you know what happened in that Luke chapter 1, verse 18 to 20? When the angel promised and said, look, you are old and everything I know, but I'm releasing grace upon you. Zechariah asked a question. How shall I know this? I am an old man. My wife is advancing years and of come on, she's barren. She's barren. That was his doubt. Now look at verse 19. What did verse 19 say? The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and bring this good news. But verse 20 now tells us that he actually didn't believe because he said, and behold, you will be silent. You will be unable to speak until the day that these things take place because you didn't believe my words, which will be fulfilled in his time. That was God shutting his doubt by his grace. When we begin to doubt and we are sincere with God, God comes 
when we are walking before him, remember, walk before him. You doubt him. Walk before him. Doubt him before him. You, 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 you're, you're struggling with a, a habit. Walk before him. With him. Are you getting me? Don't walk ahead of God. Don't walk for God. Stop this work mentality and let's receive his perfect gift of grace. The Bible said God had to supernaturally sovereignly intervene so that his doubts will be shot. Listen, I never saw it from that angle. I'm seeing it now that, oh, God actually, by his grace, helped him, Zechariah, to shut his doubts. You pray today, God, I'm doubting this area. Help me shut my doubts. Shut my doubts. If it literally means, you know what? Stop saying negative things. So be it. If it literally means, you know what? I don't want you to even defend yourself anymore. You've been trying to make a defense of yourself. You've been accused here and there and here and there. People are saying, every time you defend yourself, it gets worse. And God is saying, I am your defense. Shut up. I am your defense. You shut up and let me show up in the name of Jesus. You shut up. Let me show up. Listen, there was a man, father of a possessed child. Jesus simply asked him, Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 27, you see the scripture? Go and read it. Jesus said, do you believe I can heal your son? He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. That's what it means to walk before God. Walk with him. Lord, I'm doubting. And Jesus told him, only believe and you will see. And Jesus intervened. That's the grace of God we're talking about. Finally, Mary Luke chapter 1, verse 34 to 38. Did you know what happened? The same angel that went to Zechariah and Zechariah doubted and sovereignly got out to shut his doubts, went to the same Mary and told her, Mary, you are a virgin. No man is going to touch you. I'm paraphrasing, but you will bear a child. And she asked a simple question. How will this happen? We are allowed to ask questions. Listen, prayer is a conversation with God. Deep, call into the deep. Your heart, do you think God does not know when you doubt him? Do you think God knows when you're doing all your braggado, confession of faith, confession of the word, and this, and your heart is far from him? Do you know what God said? These people, they just worship him with their lips. Their hearts are far. God knows when our where our hearts are located. Stop all this braggado, walking for God, walking for God, making confession like your works. It's not works. It's the grace of God. It is God that is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You walk before God. You walk with God. God, help me. Help me. Have mercy. I receive your grace. Mary asked how will this be? This is impossible. How on earth would this ever be? Do you know what happened? The angel said, okay, this is how. Helping her doubts. Helping her to know. The Bible said one thing. Mary said, look, 138. As you have spoken. Behold, I am your servant. I'm ready to do whatever you say. Lord means my owner. I am, Lord, you are my owner. You own me. Do as you please. Let it be to me according to your word. And that was it. Case closed. The angel departed from her. Next week, we will go in depth and we'll see the other things. But today I sense this is where the spirit of God will have us stop to help everyone shut their doubts. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Listen, do you now know what happened afterwards? She believed, departed, and did what the angel said. We'll see more of that next week. Don't miss next week. She went to her cousin Elizabeth, the same cousin. And in verse 45, hear what God said. And I want you to go with this. Verse 45, Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Oh, Lord, help, 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 help me today. Begin to cry. Walk before God. 
verse 45 blessed is she who believed that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken from the Lord let us pray let us pray right now I just want to give you a minute a minute the prayer of Jabez I calculated it did not last even a minute Lord remove evil far from me Lord I am Jabez sorrow my mother conceived me in sorrow take this evil take this evil there will be a performance the King James in Luke chapter 1 verse 45 there will be a performance of that which was spoken the word you heard today receive the perfect gift of grace 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 upon grace mercy upon mercy oh please pray 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 lord let it be unto me according to your word these are my fears these are my doubts please do not pretend god knows your heart god knows the location of your heart god knows it's not just your lips your lips is saying one thing your heart is believing another thing help me lord i have been in this situation for so long i receive grace i receive grace oh lord god i pray right now in the name of jesus do what you please this is not my word lord you have spoken to me and through me confirm every word with signs following father thank you as we begin a 21 day asking seeking receiving lord let that be a performance of every word you've spoken and everyone here listen holy spirit introduce jesus to that man introduce jesus to that woman to that boy to that teenage boy to that young boy of 11 who's been asking questions thank you thank you thank you blessed be god forevermore in jesus name listen everything you've heard today Go and do it. God bless you.